All right, this is a quick demonstration on one of my favorite sites for analyzing model data. So it's weather.cod.edu slash forecast. And this is the numerical weather prediction data uh, that they are analyzing. Now you're gonna see here, if you can see my cursor here, we have short range model data on the left-hand side. So very high resolution, but it doesn't go out in time a long range. You get medium range models here, long range weather models here, and then you also have the ability to do some comparison. So let's start off here with a short range weather model. We're gonna click on the HRRR. This is a very good weather model. Uh, this weather model runs every hour. So a new hour, uh, new data comes in every single hour, and then about every six hours, you get a longer run of that data. So uh, here we are on August 8th. This is the 11Z run. Uh, and you grab a hold of the little slider down here at the bottom. And this is essentially simulated reflectivity. This is what the weather model thinks the radar is going to look like. And as you can see, as we go through the day today, not much rain until we head into kind of the evening hours. Now, you will have to see up here uh, this 03Z, that is Zulu time or Greenwich mean time. Uh, that you have to deal with here. But uh, for simple things here in the summertime, zero uh, Z or 12 Z is 7 a.m. and zero Z is 7 p.m. So here we are. This is 7 p.m. zero Z time. So you see the storms across Nebraska uh, and then they are sliding to the south and east. Now, if we want a little longer range here or we can see what recent model runs are, you go over here to the left-hand side. Let's go back to the 6Z run. So while the normal HRRR is 18 hours, uh, this one here is a little bit longer. Uh, so we can start you off 06Z Tuesday morning. And then we go through time. We show the rain showers moving through uh, and then the chance for storms erupting late during the overnight hours and then sliding on through. And also the arrows on here uh, indicate wind speed and direction. So this is just one weather model. Uh, what we can do is we can park uh, the slider here at a certain time frame. So, okay, uh, this is 9Z on Wednesday. Let's just click on a different model here and it's gonna bring up that same time frame, and that way you can compare. So the wrap model uh, shows this. You can go back to the HRRR. Notice similar solutions. We could go to the NAM ST. That's called the NAM Nest. It's also a fairly high resolution weather model. It doesn't show quite as much. Uh, you can go to the NAM here. Again, these are kind of medium range weather models. Uh, and then you could also go out to the European weather model or the GFS weather model to get additional information. Now, the further right here, the GFS, that's much longer time frame. Uh, so we're going out about two weeks in time. As you get that far out, things sometimes get a little funny. Uh, but this is just one example. And this is just an example of using this to track rainfall. We can go back to the HRRR here. And notice on the left-hand side here, generally what you're going to be using is either surface or precipitation or maybe winter. You could use winter for tracking snowfall potential, but also surface. We could look at temperatures. Uh, so this here is gonna be model data showing the temperatures and also the wind direction and speed, these little wind barbs on there. You can use wind gust. Say you want to see what the wind gusts and direction is going to be. Those little arrows uh, are going to help give you the direction uh, that you're going to be dealing with. Again, you can compare different weather models here. You can go back through different time frames. We can go back to the most recent data here, which is about 18 hours out, uh, and you can see the changes. So uh, this is, again, by far one of the most used websites I use for looking at weather models. It's very simple to compare weather models here. Just start playing around on it, and I think you're going to find a lot of useful information on it.